Happy Friday, my friends. We have got a loaded card today. Full baseball action. We've got a ton of playing games here as we've got the last two matchups. And I've got six, not just three. This is the free three times two today since I took off yesterday. So I've got six best bets for you guys in today's matchups and games. Let's get into it. What's up, my friends? It's your boy, Noble Living Bath with another DYF Bets video where I'm breaking down my favorite picks and plays of the day as you just try to get to the bag together and make some money. Not yesterday because we didn't have a show, short card, not a lot of games especially later on in the day and especially because the game that i was going to give you in the cubs got rained out as well so it's just really one of those things where no reason to kind of force it yesterday if you were in the discard group we did hit on a few early best bets but it's okay on Wednesday, we did cash in on for another winning day. That's three straight winning days in a row. So we're starting to heat up. We need that. Another two in one day on Wednesday. We cashed on the bull spread. No sweat bet there. We cashed on Bam's rebounds. We got it done, even though he had early foul trouble. We did lose on Maxi's points and assists, but it wasn't because the volume was there. It was just because of kind of how the game was played. A really muddy game. Nicholas Batum ended up stepping up big time for the Sixers to help them win that game. So two and one on the day, not too bad. You can see our year today record right here, still rebounding, still bouncing back in the month of April, but hopefully today's card can get us over the hump because I have got six. That's right, player props, spreads, spikes, sides. I've got it all for you guys in today's video. So if you can, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And let's dive into these best bets today. So for my first best bet of the day, I'm going to kind of give you my analysis on the play in games today. And then I'm also going to give you the corresponding picks that I'm taking to go with it. So first and foremost, we've got the Bulls and the Heat facing off here. This is the second year in a row that these two teams have faced off in the play in game for a chance to make it to the playoffs. And obviously the Heat won the game series last year because obviously they went away to the NBA Finals. But this year is a little bit different. As you know, probably by now, because you're a sports better, you stay up to the news. Jimmy Butler is out of this matchup with the MC. Sprain. It's also looking like Terry Rozier won't be playing in this matchup as well as he's still dealing with the neck spasms. Duncan Robinson was listed as out in the last game as a late scratch. I don't know if he's going to go in this game. So it's just really hard to handicap this side with all the injuries that are going on, especially for the Miami Heat. The Chicago Bulls, we know that Zach Levine's out for the rest of the season. That's kind of been something that's been known for a while. But Alex Caruso, their best defender, got ran into by Andre Drummond, just a stupid bonehead play by Drummond, and he ends up hurting his ankle. So I don't think he's going to be playing in this matchup as well so because of that i don't really have a side that i like but i do think because of all the injuries there are several player props that we need to exploit due to kind of how the stars of these teams have been hurt and now it's going to have to re require certain players to step up so the first one that we're going to need to step up is kobe white and tyler hero we saw kobe white go absolutely off against the hawks 40 plus points in that matchup and i still to have a really good bounce back game today as well and then what should be a good matchup do i think the heat are going to allow him to get off as the same way I don't think so but I do think the focal point for the heat is going to be taking away DeMar DeRozan which should open up the floor for Kobe White and again with no Alex Caruso in this matchup it should open up the floor a little bit more for him but the way that I'm going to take both of these guys on the floor today is I'm going to take their three pointers made so I'm going to parlay both of them both of them to hit a three three pointers I know it's a little bit high but if you parlay both of these guys together to hit three threes it gets you to minus 105 odds here and I really like that now Kobe White this season last game against the Hawks, he went 3 of 7 from the 3-point line on 15 of 21, shooting for 42 points. You love to see that. Meanwhile, against the Heat this season, he's faced them four times. And every game, 4 of 10, 4 of 11, 4 of 8, 4 of 10. So he's flown over this total in all four of those matchups. So guess what? I like to take him just to hit three threes today. His line is at 2.5, so if you want to take that, you can. But it's a little bit juice, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go with the three three-pointers. Now, Tyler Hero on the other side, he's kind of struggled up and down a little bit with his shot since he's come back from injury. But the thing about Tyler Hero, you know you're going to get the volume from him. He shot 4 of 14 from the three-point line against the Sixers, so you know he's going to shoot a ton of three-pointers and so far this year he's averaging about three three-pointers made per game to go with about seven to eight attempts per game so you know that the volume is going to be there and for me it's just going to more be more of a volume play who's going to score for the heat if jimmy butler is not there if duncan robinson's not there to spread the floor if terry rosier is not matching up there so i think that tyler hughes can get more than his fair share of shots up he shot it 27 times in the game against the sixers i just need him to hit three of those three-pointers which i think he should be able to get that done today so give me 
both of these guys parlayed to hit three three-pointers as our first best bet of the day. Now, our second best bet of the day, we're also going to stay in this matchup because of what's going to go on. We've seen the point total literally plummet in this matchup. It opened up at about 210. Now, it's around 205, 206 on certain books. And because of that, we're expecting another defensive battle, another defensive matchup. And because of the zone that the Heat run as well, that's one reason why I like Kobe White to shoot the threes. But it also opens up the floor for rebound opportunities. And we're going to run it back with Mr. Bam out of bio today. So we're going to go Bam over 10.5 rebounds. Your book might have it at 11.5 at plus money or like low minus 105 or so. You can take that. So it is playable at minus 11.5. But I'm going to take the 10 and a half. I'm going to lay the juice at minus 130 on FanDuel because it's just for me a matchup. Bam is going to have to stay on the floor. He's going to have to stay out of foul trouble. But the good news is Vucic is not a center like in beat that's going to kind of put the pressure on Bam. So Bam is smart on the defensive side of the floor. He needs to stay on the floor for the Heat to be able to compete and win in this game. But they also need him to grab the rebounds because of the low total that we're getting in this matchup. I'm expecting a lot of missed shots in this game. And I'm also expecting the Heat to run the kind of that matchup zone that they do, which is also kind of puts Bam right there near the rim for him to grab more rebounds opportunities and we saw Bam on the boards last game he was able to grab 11 offensive he was able to grab 12 rebounds to go with four offensive rebounds so I love to see the fact of him crashing the glass there so for me it's just a matchup that's going to be more defensive minded in this game and it's to me it's going to be a little bit more of a slower pace grit and grind game unlike what we saw with the Bulls and the Hawks and Bam Adebayo should be able to exploit that today so don't overthink it let's grab his rebounds as our second best bet inside of this matchup now for my third best bet of the day we're going to go to a late night game between the Kings and the Pelicans. And I'm going to give you a side in this one. I'm going to go with the Sacramento Kings on the money line. Minus 125 odds. I think they win this game outright. The Pelicans just don't look right. And now with no Zion Williamson, that is a huge blow to this team. I mean, they looked absolutely abysmal before he decided to turn up in the third and fourth quarter. And then he left the game with the hamstring injury. So that's just a tough loss. He had 40 points in that matchup before he lost. And for me, it's Brandon Ingram. He doesn't look right. He's not healthy. He's not shooting the ball well. CJ McCollum, obviously, you're expecting him to turn up what we've seen what he can do in the playoff time back in his Portland days. But the thing about that is you have to be able to turn it on in playoff time. And when you're not doing that all through the regular season, it's very hard to just flip that switch just like that. So because of that, I think the Kings are going to be the better team in this matchup. I like the confidence that they have beating the Warriors, an old rival, absolutely smacking them. That game was not even close. And if you're worried about no Malik Monk, no Kevin Herter, I'm not really worried about that. They've been playing without those two guys for the last month. They're 5-5 five and five over the last month without them, so they know how to win without them. They know how to play without them. We've seen Keon Ellis step up in their matchup. Keegan Murray step up in their absence. So for me, I'm not overthinking it. The Kings are the better team here. They have the more offensive weapons and for me it's just going to be a fact that the Pelicans just have way too many injuries if Brandon Ingram decides to show up and drop 25 points okay the Pelicans are going to compete but I just don't see how they're going to be able to get it done with kind of the injuries that they've been dealing with and the players that they have so for me I think that the Kings are just the more experienced team in this matchup they've been in the playoffs the last several years they play tough series going seven games they've got a veteran coach in Mike Brown who's been in these situations have gone deep in playoff runs won NBA championships Willie Green doesn't have that. And that's what matters in the playoff time. I get the Pelicans are at home. If the Kings are at home, this is easily a three, four and a half point spread. So I'm going to take the Kings on a money line here as a pick em. I like the value that we're getting. So give me the Kings to get the win in this matchup. Okay, but I get it. Some of you guys are on the Pelicans. See, the Pelicans can win this game. So if the Pelicans are going to win this game, unless CJ McCollum has like a 30 point game, right? For me, it's going to require the role players to step up. Playoff time is always about role players coming out of their role and really showing up and kind of going above and beyond. So because of that, I've got two more player props for you guys in this game for the Pelicans that if they do win this game, if they are competing in this game, you need these two guys to step up. First, we've got Jose Alvarado. We've got Herb Jones. I'm going to take over 7.5 points for Alvarado and over 15.5 points in rebounds for Herb Jones. That's minus 120 odds, minus 115 odds for both of these guys. Now, Jose Alvarado, it's one of those guys that I'm not a big fan of taking role players because they're not always going to get a ton of minutes. 
but Alvarado is a guy who has the Kings number. In four games against this Kings this year, 14 points, 9 points, 10 points, and 5 points. So you love to see that. And the 5 points came in the first game of the year back in November. Back in earlier this month and back in April the 11th, he had 14 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists in just 22 minutes against the Kings. That's the type of confidence that you want from your players, from your role players against a familiar team. And in the last match against the Lakers, he had 10 points and he's had 10 points in back-to-back -back games. So Alvarado is not that big of a scorer. We know that. But 7 points per game is not too, too bad. And with no Zion eating up another 30, 40 minutes, you're going to maybe have to rely on him to score a little bit more and get a few more bench points. But because of no Zion, that means that Herb Jones is going to be relied on a lot more heavily in this matchup. Herb Jones is used to playing significant minutes for this Pelicans team. We've seen him play over 30 plus minutes over the last month or so. And Herb Jones is a guy who can stretch the floor, hit a few three-pointers, but he's also an excellent defender. So you know he has to stay on the floor to guard the best player for the Kings. So for me, I'm going to see Herb Jones over 15 and a half points and rebounds this year against the Kings. Yeah, it's a little bit hit or miss because he's had five points and five rebounds. So that's only 10. And then another matchup back in January, he had nine points and three rebounds. So he hasn't really gone over this number against the Kings this year. But when you look at his numbers, he's gone over this line in the four games without Zion at home this year. He's also in six of the seven games at home without Zion. He's played more than 26 minutes. So we know that he's going to have to be on the floor. And also the Kings are giving up the six most three-pointers to small forwards. So that should allow him to get a few more shots off in the three-point line. And the fifth most points for games, two small forwards as well. So I'm expecting more minutes from Herb Jones. So I'm expecting both of these guys to have to step up. So give me Herb Jones. Jose Alvarado as role players in this matchup if the Pelicans are going to compete not get blown out or win this game you're going to need them to step up here in a big spot so give me both of those guys as picks four and picks five here now for my sixth pick of the day we're going to go down to the baseball slide just give you guys a little baseball play here we're going to go to the Nationals and the Astros game I'm going with the Nationals first five team total over one and a half runs I, don't, I know I don't have that here on the screen so do the first five here over one and a half runs, minus 135 odds. Now, Justin Verlander is going to the mound for the Houston Astros in this matchup, and I just cannot really back Verlander here. The 41-year-old is making his MLB debut, but he's had two tune-up starts in both AA and AAA, and both of those tune-up starts, right, in the AA, seven hits, six runs given up. Then he went to AAA, seven hits, seven runs given up, and just three and four innings of work. That's not going to get it done, especially against a Nationals team that right now is ranked in the top 20. 20 in majors and first five runs per game, averaging about 2.3 first five runs per game. But over the last three games, three and a half first five runs per game. So for me, I just think that Verlander has not shown us too many things just yet with his form. Uh, do, does he get it back turned around? Yeah, sure, he does. But the 41-year-old, I'm not backing him right now. I like the way that the Nationals are playing. C.J. Abrams is hitting the ball well. We should be able to get a little bit more production from Lane Thomas and Joey Gallo, some of these other guys on the team. And for me, I think this is a good opportunity. We know Verlander is a strikeout pitcher, which means that he's going to be throwing the ball over the plate, which means that there should be more hit opportunities. So I'm not going to overthink this here. Give me the Washington Nationals in the first five. If you want to take them on the run line plus half the run to be able to pick it up, I like that as well as Mackenzie Gore is a really good pitching option as well for the Nationals. I like the way they've been playing, but I'm not really going to get there because we just know what the Houston Nationals offense can do. Right? Even though they have not been playing up to expectations really due to injuries, I'm just going to isolate this to the team total for the Nationals for them to be able to get to Verlander here. And let's get that done as our sixth best bet of the day. Well, that's it for me, my friends. I know I gave you guys a ton of picks, but I wanted to make up for not giving you guys games yesterday. And we have a ton of action here. So give me Kobe White and Tyler Hero both day at three three-pointers. That's minus 105 in a parlay. Give me Bam Adebayo over 10.5 rebounds. You can play the 11.5 as well. Give me the Kings on the money line tonight against the Pelicans. Give me Jose Alvarado over 7.5 points. Give me Herb Jones over 15.5 points in rebounds. And then we'll go to the Nationals and Houston Astros game. Give me the Nationals first five. Five team total over one and a half runs. For a few more picks and plays that I might get throughout the day, click the link in the description, join the free Discord group. I got you guys. All right, my friends, drop your picks below so this way I can tell you, or maybe you guys are on opposite sides of me. I like that as well. We always like to go head to head. It's always fun like that. And I'll be back tomorrow as we start the NBA playoffs. If you did not watch our NBA playoffs preview show with Shark Lark on Loot Riders on Twitch yesterday, it is inside the bio. The link is inside the show notes as well. So that way you guys can watch that show 
we streamed it live here on YouTube and Twitch. So we broke down all of the first round matchups, who we're taking in those games, what series odds we like. So make sure you guys check that out as well. And then tomorrow we'll be back with some more best bets. All right, my friends, appreciate the love and support. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Dictate your fate, get to that chat. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Later, gang.